SpaceX is killing it with multiple successes over multiple fronts, starting with their Mars rocket prototype, Starship. We'll begin with that. Then we'll debrief this week's Falcon 9 missions, Salcom 1B and Starlink Flock 12, discuss future missions, and finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Sunday, SpaceX attempted to fly their SN6 Starship prototype to 150 meters and back, but was stymied by the weather. I'm assuming high gusts of winds. But as I went over in yesterday's breaking sewed, they were solid with their attempt later in the week, making this the fourth successful hop for Raptor in a row and second hop within a month. And for those of you keeping track, it has only flown four times. It's quite the record. And they did it without Elon because Elon was too busy building a rave cave in Germany or something like that. But he did tweet that SN6 flew a similar hop to SN5, but only smoother and faster. It should be noted that there was indeed a undercarriage fire upon landing, but the sprinkler system was ready to quench that nonsense. SN5 and 6 may do additional hops before SN8 heads up to 20 clicks in altitude, but next up to the plate is SN7.1, a 304L stainless steel test bed. But it won't fly. Well, not in the traditional sense at least. Meep, meep. Instead, it will be cryo-tested to failure on Sunday if the schedule holds. The prototank is built and its stand is on standby. Just down the way at the launch site rests the orbital launch mount, where future heavy starships will head to space. But first, SpaceX will need a super heavy booster to make that happen. The high bay in which they will be stacked has reached its ceiling. It just needs some paneling now. Ron over at ExploreMars.org on Twitch got to phone interview Elon on his way to Deutschland, and he had a few interesting things to say. First, they will be starting construction of said booster this week. Its design has shifted from six legs to four with a wider stance, as to avoid engine plume impingement in the vacuum of space. They are aiming to reduce the number of Raptors in this first stage to 28, down from 31. 20 of those 28 will not gimbal to steer, but the center eight will. The outer engines will use thrust vector control and differential throttling to help it along. By any measure, the high thrust to weight variant of Raptor will probably have the highest thrust to weight ratio of any engine ever. Raptor reached 230 metric tons of force at peak pressure with some damage caused to the engine, so therefore Elon assumes this current version being tested can probably sustain that required 210 tons. Should have a 250 plus ton engine in about 6 to 9 months, target for the super heavy booster is 7500 tons of thrust. That number derives from the outer 20 engines that will have 300 tons of thrust and the inner 8 about 200 tons of thrust. So we're looking at about 50% more thrust than required to get it up. And the part of the ship that these Raptor engines will be mounted to is going to be the hardest part for the design, but they're on top of it. In McGregor, Texas, they are currently testing Raptor vacuum. Run-ups with a shorter vacuum skirt went well. Full-length skirt testing is coming soon. Elon thinks Starship will try to reach orbit next year. However, he also thinks it will take a few attempts to be successful since this is uncharted territory. You know, launching a 100% reusable rocket to orbit. And lastly, although Tesla is hiring an interior designer for their electric cars, who will also be required to do some Starship cabin designing as well in the future. Elon said they haven't begun to think about making moves on that yet. They are solely focused at the moment on reaching orbit with Starlink satellites. Moving on now to debrief a couple Falcon 9 missions that launched this week. Let's start off with Sawakam 1B that lifted off on Sunday evening from Slick 40 at the Cape. And lift off of Falcon's first East Coast Polar launch, Ola Argentina. This was the first time SpaceX has ever launched a rocket into a polar orbit from the East Coast, and the first time any company or agency has done that since the 60s. This was the booster's fourth launch, and she made touchdown at landing zone one, a more uncommon, yet a very welcoming opportunity for us to see this 20-story stick of dynamite eloquently land itself from a side angle. A few minutes later, the primary payload was released into orbit, the rideshare CubeSats following suit about an hour after, SpaceX did not attempt to catch the fairings because of the day's busy schedule. They were instead fished out of the water and returned to port a couple nights later. Yesterday morning, Starlink's 12th flock of satellites were launched from Pad 39A and placed into a very low Earth orbit 15 minutes later. If you include Flock Zero, that puts the tally over 700 Starlink satellites in orbit. Since the beginning of the program, only a couple handfuls of satellites are no longer in operation. This was the second flight for this particular booster, and it boarded the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship out in the Atlantic. This time SpaceX did attempt to catch the fairings using Mystery and Mischief, but no word at this time as to how they fared, no pun intended. That is to say they probably missed, or we would have heard something by now. 
Yep, this just came in from Kyle Montgomery on Twitter. They are brokey. Our next SpaceX launch this month, actually the next couple of launches, is Starlink's 13th and 14th flocks. No exact dates are scheduled at the moment, but they'll be releasing those doves soon enough. And soon we could also be seeing our first West Coast launch from Vandenberg Air Force Base in more than a year. A NASA Ocean Observer satellite will ride upon a Falcon 9 rocket on November 10th. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Wednesday, NASA and Northrop Grumman executed a horizontal static test of an SLS solid rocket booster in Utah using potential new materials and processes that can be incorporated into future models. The Hawk-sized Grumman candle burned for two minutes, the required time it will need to run for a real flight, producing more than 3 million pounds of thrust and knocking the world off its axis. Okay, that last part I added just for dramatic effect. Don't worry, you're safe. But this was the largest, most powerful solid rocket booster ever built for flight. NASA's SLS rocket will be used under the Artemis program alongside the Orion spacecraft, Lunar Gateway, and Human Landing System to place astronauts on the moon by 2024 and eventually on to Mars. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. These videos were brought to you by the wonderful eccentric fellers over on Patreon and here in the YouTube membership program. You too can support the making of these videos by checking out the links in the description below, Bob. And while you're down there, don't forget to support local SpaceX photographers. Please have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.